We are all human beings. And as human beings, we crave connection with other human beings. Now, I know this was somewhat easier in person, and a lot of us feel disconnected in this new virtual world. We feel like we can't make connection with the people on the other side of the screen. But it is possible, and I'm going to teach you nine ways that you can make screen-to-screen -screen connection. Stay tuned on Moxie Talk. Hi everyone, I'm Fia Fastbinder. Welcome to Moxie Talk, where we help you find your voice, share your message, and lead with confidence. Today we're talking about ways that you can connect in virtual presentations or virtual meetings. How do you connect with the people on the other side of the screen, which we call screen to screen connection? The first really important tip that I know so many people have difficulty with in a camera is eye contact. You must, 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 must make eye contact with the camera. Now, I know this is difficult because some of us have dual monitors and the camera's on the other monitor, or because we're trying to look at the faces of the people in the squares on Zoom and the squares are over here, but there are some easy ways that you can look like you're making eye contact at the people across the screen from you just by looking in the camera. The first, if you're on Zoom, make sure that you move those squares of the people's faces to right underneath your camera, right? If you need a reminder to do this, take a sticky note with a little smiley face and put it right by your camera. If you're using dual monitors, make sure that the camera is the one you're looking at. The, the screen with the camera is the one you're looking at. So you don't spend your whole presentation like this, because there's nothing that disconnects humans more than no eye contact, right? So really make sure you're making eye contact. And in that same vein, make sure you're smiling. Have you ever logged onto a Zoom meeting and you're waiting for the person to start or waiting for the person to show up and you, they do and they're like this and you can see they're kind of furrow browed trying to get their audio and their video and their faces are dropped? Well, you know what? The people on the other side of the screen are watching that and they make a split second decision about if you wanna be there, if they can trust you, if they like you, if this is going to be enjoyable, split second. So make sure you're smiling, make sure you're making eye contact, make sure the people across the screen know you're happy to be there. So that's tip number one. Tip number two, along with this idea of, you know, making eye contact with the camera is good lighting and audio. Nobody's going to see your eye contact or your smile if you're poorly lit and we can't hear you. So there's, this really disconnects an audience. Now there's a couple ways for audio, simple ways. If you have a pair of headphones that came with your phone, plug them in. Even that is better audio than your computer audio. Your computer is designed to take sound from all around, ambient sound. And then that's why you sound tinny when you are presenting with just your computer audio. If you want to go, you know, higher than that, you want to spend some money, get a good professional mic, like a Yeti mic would be a great one. That's what I use and I love it. So make sure that everyone can hear you and then they have great audio sound. You can hear them and we have connection. Now, if you're poorly lit, this also disconnects. Something as easy as a desk light on your desk will light up your face. Have you ever been on a Zoom meeting and somebody is like in the shadows or like Phantom of the Opera style and you can only see half of their face? It, it's really kind of disconnecting, isn't it? It's jarring. So a simple desk light or turn your computer by a window so you get that nice, awesome, natural sunlight. But good audio, good lighting is a great way to make sure you can show your smiling face to the people across the screen. Tip number three, last one that has to do with technology is your camera angle. How many of us have sat through Zoom meetings or WebEx meetings where we see like just from here up 
or somebody's cameras like underneath them, you can see all their, you know, their chins. Apparently this has started a whole plastic surgery craze because everyone's looking at their double chins on Zoom. Um, or somebody's camera is at the bottom of their computers, you know, how the, the old laptops with the cameras in the bottom. And so you can just see the strange angle. You wanna make sure your camera is right across from your face. It's at eye level. And if it's not at eye level, Take some books. This is a super easy, low tech way. Take some books or some board game uh, boxes and stack them up so that your camera is eye level. You wanna be looking directly into the eyes of your audience and you want them looking directly into your eyes. So some easy technical tips to make sure you're connecting on to the people on the other side of the screen. Tip number four has more to do with the way you are delivering your message, and that is to make sure you ask questions. Connect with your audience by asking questions. Make them feel important, make them feel heard. A lot of us just like launch into our meeting, launch into our presentation, and we don't ask questions. But the great thing about our virtual technology is you can actually chat questions, and you can have people chat the answers. If you need a little bit of time to get your notes together, for instance, chat a question and have people start answering. You know, this makes people feel really connected to the speaker because it shows that that speaker cares. You don't even have to chat the questions. If you wanna just ask the questions, ask them aloud and you can elicit real responses, ask people to unmute themselves and respond to you. This is kind of like, oh wow, they wanna hear from me? Uh, people don't do this often, but it's a great, way to connect to people in your in your uh, presentations or meetings in the virtual world. So really make sure that you are seeing them, hearing them, asking questions, and listening to their responses. That's really important. The next one, which is kind of a, a bigger concept, and this is number five, is to make deposits before withdrawals. Now, there's nothing like a, it, attending a webinar or a meeting where some, the speaker asks something of you, like they ask you to um, do an exercise or you know answer these questions or take a some kind of quiz, and they haven't even introduced themselves to you. They haven't even warmed up. They haven't told you anything about their personal story. They haven't shared anything with you. They haven't told you what your you know the goal of this presentation or or what you can expect from it or why you're here. So make sure you give those people on the other side of the screen your story, the goal, the why. Make sure they feel really like that you're giving to them before you ask anything of them. You know, they need to feel that you care. It's that old saying, nobody cares what you know until they know what you care, that you care, right? So make sure they know you care by making deposits before you ask anything of them. And you know, the great thing about this is I guarantee you'll get better responses. If you are one of those people who has asked questions before and you don't wanna do it again because nobody answered, try this technique. Next time, share something personal, um, you know, give the agenda, let them know the goal, let them know that you really want them to be there. Try that before you start asking questions. I guarantee you'll get a better response. So make those deposits, right? Number six is do some icebreaker activities, do some discussions, do some activities and breakout rooms, do anything to break up the lecturing. Now, there are many studies about audience engagement. My, fam my favorite one is John Medina's study. He runs the Seattle Brain Institute and he wrote a best-selling novel called it was not a novel, a best-selling book called Brain Rules. And in this book, he uh, hooks an entire audience up to electrocardiograms. And then he has the speaker lecture to them. And what he noticed is that for every 10 minutes of lecturing, the audience's heartbeats took a nosedive. Why? Because our bodies do better when we, we're hunters and gatherers. So we're supposed to get information while we're moving, while we're doing things. This is how we learn best. So we need to give the audience some sort of break from you lecturing at them every 10 minutes. Now, and that's in person. Do you wanna know what it is in the virtual world? It's 
four minutes. But if you really want your audience to feel connected to you, if you really want them to feel that you care and you've put some thought into this presentation or meeting and you've put some thought into how to engage them and connect with them, every four minutes, you have to do something other than lecturing, whether it's a question, a poll, a quiz, a discussion, in breakout rooms even if there's too many of them, an activity, an icebreaker, a song, a video, so, something to show that you are not gonna lecture at these people. I guarantee they will come away from your presentation saying, that was so engaging. I really could tell that this speaker uh, prepared and they cared about giving an engaging presentation. So that's number six. Number seven is let other people do things in your presentation or your meeting. Assign them parts, let them speak. Let people know that they are important by giving them the stage for a little while. You know, it's one thing to be the star of the show, the entire meeting or the entire presentation, but it is another thing to say, I wanna hear from you. So this is your turn to take the mic and to talk to us and to tell us your story. If this is a team meeting, assign people parts ahead of time. Let somebody lead something. Let them take a portion of it so that they feel important and you're not stealing the show the whole time. This really makes people feel connected to you and important and equivalent, right? So that's number seven. Number eight is movement breaks, people. Movement breaks. Zoom fatigue is real. Zoom fatigue is real. And we've all experienced this now. We've all been on virtual worlds long enough to know that Zoom fatigue is real, right? Distractions are everywhere from emails to texts to dogs barking to babies crying to kids asking things of us um, to Instagram and Facebook calling our name, right? There are so many distractions. And we're sitting at the computers for so long. You know, it's like we're growing roots into our desk chair. So if you can take a quick movement break with your group, if it's anything over a half hour, and if you're not comfortable with this, give them a quick bio break and encourage them to get up and move. You know, get a cup of coffee, get a snack, come back, right? We really need to move our bodies. That shows that you are human, you're feeling the same way they are. You know, there's nothing like these uh, these meetings that go on for four hours and you're thinking, is this person as bored as I am? Yes, we are all human. We all need those movement breaks to break up the, the, um, the monotony of these meetings and to be able to sit for longer. So make sure you add those in. And ninth, maybe the most important, perhaps the most important of all of this to show connection is to show gratitude. Be grateful for being able to present to these people, for getting the opportunity to lead a meeting. You know, there is nothing, there is no better gift in the world than the gift of somebody's attention. And somebody, a lot of people are giving you their time and their full attention in these meetings and these presentations. So be grateful for it. Let your audience know that you are so grateful and so honored to be there with them. That is such a great way to connect with them. I hope these tips help you go out into the virtual world and speak from your heart, connect with your audience. I can't wait to see you next time on Moxie Talk. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like it, subscribe to our channel, share it with your friends, and we'll see you next week.